Today we're doing a PC build with a graphics card that maybe shouldn't exist. And we're gonna be testing that theory inside this awesome new case from Antec. Antec was nice enough to sponsor this video and send over their beautiful NX416L case, which has some awesome cool features I'm gonna go over. This case from Antec features a really awesome design with good ventilation up front, two 160 mil ARGB fans, a full ATX design with tempered glass and a price point at $99 that is really solid. We'll go over this case a little bit more when we go over all the parts for this PC build. The big shout again to Antec for sponsoring this video. They have a lot of awesome cases at a wide range of different prices. And for this build, this is the perfect case. So let's not waste any more time and talk about the rest of the parts that make up this PC build and then dive more into the case. One of the things we decided to take advantage of is the cheap, cheap prices of 12th gen Intel right now specifically the 12600KF, which is a 10 core 16 thread processor. And they are a really amazing price right now. Now for the cooler, because we got to cool that thing. It doesn't come in the stock cooler. We have an ID cooling SC225 XT in black. This actually comes with two fans. I guess that's what makes it the V2. And it's a pretty beefy cooler. I mean, you can really feel the weight in this thing. A little bit nicer than normal 214 XT that we normally use. So I think this thing's gonna run really chill. And for the motherboard, we have an MSI Pro B760P Wi-Fi. We went with DDR4 instead of DDR5 because ATX boards are already pretty expensive and you really don't see a huge performance gain from going DDR5. So really nice board though. You get uh, actually two four pins and an extra four pin for the CPU. So you could do like an i9 if you wanted to. And then we have the four RAM slots for lots of upgrades in the future. And speaking of RAM, we have Lexar 32 gigs at 3600 megahertz DDR4. So at least we got a pretty fast speed. It is dual channel, 32 gigs, which is plenty of capacity. Cause hey, this video is all about RAM and VRAM. And speaking of fast RAM, we had to go with a fast SSD. This is Lexar NM790 one terabyte gen 4. Look at these speeds. That's pretty freaking fast. So we're not gonna have any problems loading games and downloading and whatnot with this SSD. And for the graphics card, this right here is the PowerColor RX 7600 XT. And the reason we're testing this card is because this is the 16 gig variant, which uh, on review didn't really do that hot. This card is $329 versus the $269 you can find the normal RX 7600 for, but you get 16 gigs of VRAM. So in today's video, since we had the sample sent over by PowerColor, we're just gonna test it in a PC build and see if it makes sense. We're gonna run some games at higher settings, see if we can max out that VRAM and just kind of see if the extra money is actually worth it to get the 16 gig version. And to power the build, you guys know this power supply. We use it so much over at PCBros.tech, our PC selling business. Uh, the SegoTap GN650 80 plus gold power supply. It's a professional power supply for gamers and other people. It not just be gamers, guys. Uh, but yeah, 80 plus gold, very solid power supply with room for upgrades in the future. And of course, we have to go back to this case from Antec, the NX416L, which does come in black and white. And like we mentioned at the beginning of the video, has the pre-installed ARGB fans, a pair of 160 mil fans up front with one in the back. And all in all for $100, it's a really solid case. I think it's gonna be great for airflow with this build, keeping things nice and cool. And it should be very easy to build in with really solid build quality because Antec is known for doing that. So yeah, guys, let's go ahead and build this PC, see how that 16 gig RX 7600 XT performs. And then we'll just wrap the video up and decide whether or not this card is worth it and uh, why you should buy an Antec case, because Antec cases are great. All right guys, we're playing Halo Infinite and we're at 1440p because we think this thing deserves it. And we're at max FOV, high preset, uh, unlocked FPS, no V-Sync or nothing. And we're gonna see what type of FPS we can get. And I don't even know if we mentioned at the beginning of the video, I think we jumped right into the graphics card, but this PC is right at a thousand bucks is the price point of this computer. Okay, so, and uh, you know, one, one thing off the rip, you know, and this is something that we obviously kind of uh, pre-talked about is, 
are we ever gonna find something that can utilize this type of VRAM with this PC having 16 gigs, uh, when it's really just not really a PC that was, or sorry, a graphics card that was ever designed to, oh my God, I'm missing everything. Oh, what happens when we talk? But yeah, it's just like a, it's just a weird card to have 16 gigs because it's even like a 4090 or 7900 XTX. Only at like 4K do we see it use that type of VRAM. We're slowly creeping up the VRAM right now. We're almost to nine gigs, which I guess is technically over the RX 7600, but um, realistically, we could get it to 16 gigs running really high settings 4K and get really unplayable results. <laughs> but it's just on resolutions and settings you'd actually use this card for. Does the extra VRAM buffer actually help? But well, we'll see as we continue on here and the VRAM seems to be going a little bit up and up. Yeah, I just don't... We're at 9.1 It is now. weird. It's like slow. I wonder if we're like loading in textures. Still. That's only how it happens it's like in games. It, it's up. really slow. VRAM just starts like going up and up and up. Got him. Oh. 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 I'll flush him out. Oh. 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 I couldn't swing quick enough. I'm, I thought I'm that guy was way more lit than he was. Yeah, I'm fumbling the bag right now, man. Shout out to Antec. The system's running nice and cool inside this case. Very easy to build in. Those 160 mil fans are providing a lot of airflow. And uh, yeah, for the price, 99 bucks. We built some really good PCs with this case. <laughs> we use more VRAM than we have. Don't worry, we're actually gonna play some Cyberpunk in that game. We can get up there. <laughs> like, we'll mess with the settings until we get there. Come here. Come here. Oh, that, that's, ooh. That's really messed up the overshield. TP again? Oh god, where am I at? Oh, ow. Why are you running? Yeah, No, why, why are you crouch walking, you weirdo? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we hit 10 right Last at the kill. end. 10. We, Let's okay, we, go. So we, got, we still have six gigs of VRAM <laughs> left at 1440p. Let's uh, see if the next game can utilize it. Cyberpunk time. All right, guys, we're in Cyberpunk. We're going to load into uh, this save, which it probably has some weird chaos happening the last time I left <laughs> this off. But um, I'll show you guys the settings when we get in there. But we're going to try... High settings, 1440p, no FSR or anything. We're just gonna see what this can do and how high the VRAM will actually get when driving around the city and such. And then from there, if it doesn't get to 16 gigs, we gotta go to 4K. Like that's that's our only option <laughs> at this point, 4K. And we will get it there on high settings. It'll get there, but how playable it actually be will be the question. So here are the settings we're currently running. We're currently running 1440p, right here, full screen. And uh, we have the high preset. The crowd density is kind of low. I feel like that will mess with the VRAM, so we'll do that. And no resolution scaling. We're just running stock, baby. And um, out the gate, only six. This is, this is scary. We're only getting only six. 60 FPS, and we're at six and a half gigs of VRAM. So it, again, it, this is the scaling issue. Let me turn the radio off. So that's the issue with these cards is like, if it's a mid-range, like entry-level 1440p card, like does it really need 16 gigs of VRAM? I, I don't know. It's just, it's weird that these manufacturers are putting this amount of VRAM on these level of cards um, when they're really just, I just touched some barbed wire. They're really just entry-level cards that I think eight or maybe even just 10 or 12, a 12 gig one that's a little bit less would make more sense in my opinion, but. I remember even the 3060 12 gig was, was kind of a weird card. Yeah. Like, cause they really could have gotten away with eight, like all of the other 30 series. Um, had that was way higher end. But. So let's go ultra, I guess, running around and see if that does anything. Um, but I, I have a strong feeling. We don't want any FSR, so we're on ultra. I have a strong feeling we're going to need to uh, crank things up to uh, 4K. So now the FPS is dropping. The VRM is going up a little bit. But then to see at this point, like it's not that playable. Like it's just uh -oh. not good. And I think FSR, I'm curious what FSR will do. Um, this is a lot of testing less. for you guys. That's what I'm thinking. If FSR makes it use less, then like, again, why do you need it? So we'll do FSR on quality. And we're getting back into the 60s. And I think VRAM's about the same. It, it went a down a less. little went bit. down a little bit. So I already know what I have to do. McAllister, I'm just bracing you. This might break the sink, <laughs> but <laughs> we're going 4K, ladies and gentlemen. Apply. Our little MS Afterburner is really small right there. And we are on ultra settings. Uh, all right, now we're 30 using FPS, seven, gigs. seven. Okay, we're climbing, I think. 
I may steal a car or get a car. Because remember the last time I got the 580 to do it, I really just pushed through the, come here, come here, hey, hey. Out the car, out the car. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. As right, so we're driving around, I don't know how I got the 16 last time. It could have just been the, actually, I don't even know, honestly. I got, oh! This is like so laggy, I can barely drive this car. <laughs> and we're still using half. Um, let's see, what else can I do here? Am I on the highest? Ray tracing overdrive. Oh, uh, that's gonna do it. 383? Oh, oh, look at it, there it goes! 13. Whoa, it's, oh, but look at that. We have the 13, but we're getting three FPS in overdrive mode. 13 and a half uh, gigs of VRAM. We're still not using all of it. See, part of me is wondering if this was a better GPU, it actually might use the 16, but it's just... Well, I bet if this was, so like the, the next step up with 16 gigs is a 7800 XT. Yeah. I bet it would be running at like 30 FPS or maybe more. Yeah. And we'd be using the 16 gigs, maybe. Well, that's Cyberpunk for you guys. Um, I guess we're just gonna switch to Fortnite to show you guys the capabilities of this PC as a whole. Um, but this is, again, our way of just kind of showing you that realistically, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for most people paying the extra, <laughs> this is so much fun, by the way, uh, paying the extra, what is it, like $60 from the 7600 to the 7600 XT. May not make sense for you unless you have a very specific workload. Maybe there's like a 3D modeling workload that makes sense for it for gaming. When everything else is the same and VRAM's the only difference, this guy's running really slow into <laughs> me. Um, it may not be worth it. Let's play Fortnite and see what this PC as a whole can do. All right, guys, we're playing a game that's probably going to use significantly less VRAM. Performance settings, uh, DX12 with quality TSR. And I think we're, what are we getting? Like, uh, only three. three. Maybe three. We'll see if that changes once we drop in. But again, these are games that people are going to play with this level of card. Honestly, you won't see much more than like five to six gigs of VRAM. So if you have eight, I know a lot of people are doom and gloom with like games like The Last of Us or newer high-end AAA titles, um, Star Wars, uh, Jedi Survivors, another game as well. If you're playing those games, then maybe, but I think you should just step up a little bit more money and get like the next gen high card instead of getting a 16 gig version of a card that's meant to be more mid-range, you know? That's yeah, just kind of what we're seeing here. Because I feel like $60 gets you kind of close to the 7700. Yeah, and that would just be a, a better buy overall. And you get 12 gigs of VRAM. <laughs> And keep an eye on this card too throughout the year. If it doesn't sell very well, there's a good chance you might see some discounts on it closer to the normal uh, 7600 non-XT. I see McAllister doing a, a little dancey dance. So hey! Oh, 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 they're gonna get away, aren't they? You baby! I don't want you, I want the actual medallion wearer. Come here. There she is. Mm, nice. Oh, the medallion just fell. Open up. Uh! Gamer. I got killed by War Pony. But yeah, guys, <laughs> we were in Cyberpunk. I mean, oh, they danced on me. Emoting Insane. on them. Insane. Uh, but yeah, we ran uh, Cyberpunk. We had to run the stupidest settings to get somewhat close to 16 gigs. We ran Halo, didn't run too bad. Um, but yeah, all in all, interesting card, but this case from Antec, it's looking pretty solid. Let's go ahead and run 3D Mark Time Squad, then wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys, we just got done benchmarking this PC at 1440p and even 4K. And our ultimate goal here wasn't just to benchmark this PC like normal, it was to see if we could utilize 16 gigs of VRAM on a somewhat mid-range slash lower end card. And the results were very difficult. It was quite hard to even get close to 16 gigs in most games. Now, I know there's other games out there, some other AAA titles that may get you there if you're running on higher settings, but from the games that we have tested, it is a bit difficult. And you can let us know in the comments down below if there's any games that you think are more VRAM hungry than the ones we did test. But in terms of our 3D Mark Time Spy score, we ended up with a score of 11,507, which is a nine cent per point score. This PC does cost around $979 to put together. And when considering you can go with the RX 7600 non-XT and save yourself maybe 50 or $60, it might be worth it going that route if you're building this PC. But you know what you should definitely keep in this PC build? The case from Antec. The NX416L is an absolutely awesome case. Very easy to build in, great airflow, and a great price. Definitely check that link 
down below to buy this case and use the links down below to build this PC. They will be affiliate links and they will help us out. Let us know what you think of this gaming PC down below. A big shout again to Antec for sponsoring today's video. And as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. And if you want this PC already built, ready to go, tested Windows 11 Pro, you should check out PCBros.Tech. PCBros.Tech. We sell gaming PCs, gaming laptops, and so much more. And Jonah is so excited to list this one. It's going on the website. He's going to Toasty Bros. to go and check out to save 2% your next purchase. See you guys later. Bye-bye.